Well, how exciting it is to be bringing you this coverage over the next couple of days from the Burnside Under 26 Singles in association with the Living House, top sponsors of this event. We're live at the Burnside Bowling Club and yes, under 26 means players under the age of 26. This is the 20th such event uh, here at Burnside. 32 players began yesterday, 8 women, 24 men and the ages range from 14 to 25. So, so far they've had 4 sections of 8. Uh, it's a 21 shot game of course being singles and no time limit. So we've got into the quarterfinal situation now. A little bit later than we'd anticipated, but we're right into play now. And our competition, this match, is between Tom Tyroa uh, from the West End Club in South Canterbury. And he's up against Hamish Kelleher, who's uh, representing or from the Cobden and Hallsville Clubs, having uh, just moved to the Christchurch region for study from the West Coast. So two outstanding young players. And joining me today is Alex Reed. And Alex, I think um, this is one of those uh, a tantalizing events, isn't it, where people talk about bowls as being for olds, bowls for oldies. But here we have such high quality players and a number of them, not just from here, but from Australia as well, competing in this. I think we're in for a classic sort of match. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't get much better than this, uh, John. And you just need to go back and look at the previous winners of this event. There's some absolutely ridiculous names on the on the honours board for this. Gosh, yes. And one of those is um, here today is the tournament director, Taylor Bruce, um, recently crowned the world singles champion, just the third New Zealand woman to gain that title uh, in our history. So I, I think it's quite marvellous that Taylor is uh, here as the tournament director. She won this event uh, in a, previously and she is back again just to help out and you know contribute to what has been a remarkable event over the years. She won it in 2015 so in the eight years since then she's gone on to be world champion of champion singles uh, cha uh, player and uh, win the world title uh, three or four weeks ago in Broad Beach in Australia. So some quality players have come out of this. Yeah, and great to see those players um, giving stuff back to the sport as well, John. So Taylor, a very competent player, but also you know dipping her toes in the administration world. And of course, the Bruces with Kerry Bruce, who um, uh, runs this event, and the father, uh, Richard, who's the president, I think, of the Burnside Bowling Club. They, they have a little bit to do with bowls, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, I'll say, gosh, yeah, it's been you know pretty much their lives, and um, people who follow bowls will know the story of Taylor coming to this particular club, uh, Burnside, back in 2008 when the World Championships were on, and as a, just a, a youngster, and her parents brought her along, sort of dragged her along a little bit, I think, and said, we're not leaving you here by yourself, you've got to come down to the bowls, we're working, we're watching, come and have a look, and, and really, she just you know, took it on, didn't she, and loved it. Absolutely fell in love with the sport, and, uh, you know, the sport's grateful for that, really. We we gained a world champion. Now, just quickly about the bowls. Um, if we look here, it looks like, that's going to be confusing. There's a blue oh, no, and red just split saying, bowl. Yeah, that is the shot, just past the jack. But, gosh, this is really difficult. They haven't got um, <laughs> stickers on them, haven't they, because it's a... Uh, we see here that this is Tyro. Yeah. He's got the split colour ball. Yeah. So Tom's playing with the, the split blue and red ball. So if you can see what you think is a little bit of red, that's his one. So he must be holding the shot at six o'clock to the jack. And then Hamish playing with just those those blue balls. And Tom falling a bit short there, but probably happy to take the one. And as you can see, yep. uh, we were promised sunshine, uh, lollipops and rainbows this afternoon, but we have rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what we've got. Uh, yes. Well, we we chatted about this last week um, at the uh, from the Morrinsville event, and just said, you know, it's almost uh, at the moment you're just about right September off for a lot of events, outdoor events, because the weather has just been so well. It's been frustrating and excruciating, really. Um, but you've got full calendars, and the players, you know, they don't mind as long as it doesn't get bitterly cold. Now they'll play in a bit of rain, of course. There's no, not much breeze out there. We'll have a look at the flags at one stage. You see brollies up in the background, but 
and you can see people wearing beanies and <laughs> and plenty of wet weather gear, so not pleasant at all. Yeah, absolutely. As we see that bowl, that's what the players can see. On the rain, that bowl got a lovely track as it comes into the head. But falling a bit short, and we think, I mean, you'd imagine with the amount of rain we're getting, it's going to slow the screen down quite a bit, isn't it, John? Mm, yeah. These are regarded as um, among the best in the country and consistently. I'm not sure who the greenkeeper is now, but always when, you know, you don't get world championships and they were held here in 2008 and 2012, I think. Uh, you don't get world championships and yes, you've got a world-class facility and this club has worked extremely hard and in improving facilities, bringing them up to the highest of quality, both uh, within the club rooms and um, and on the greens. No, it's a fantastic club. Been the headquarters for a number of high quality events. The Burnside singles we're watching now, just one of them. They've hosted multiple nationals, world championships, you name it, they've had it here. And I mean, you nothing to complain about really, is there, John, unless you, you lose a game, no. I suppose. But uh, <laughs> there's not much That's the right. club can do yeah. about that. So you'll notice it's uh, one all. So we're playing the third end, but the ends don't come into it. It's the first of 21 shots. And here's Callagher looking to take that jack back a bit. Oh. Thought he was going to do it too, just yeah. drifting past. You can see there, Tom Tyro has got the uh, the rag. He might need. I hope he's got a couple of changes in his bag because they might need more than one today. Steely look. Oh, you, you look at these players. Of course, they're um, Tyro is 24 and and Keller is 18, and and Tyro uh, from a a really well-known South Canterbury sporting name, the Tyroa family. His father, Graham, uh, introduced him to the sport, his late father, Graham. And, you know, he's been playing since he was, I don't know, about 13 or something. So, you know, they're they're used to it. They've played a lot. And, and the same with Hamish Callagher, who comes, has um, teamed up with um, Ethan and Nigel, I think, in the Champion of Champion triples uh, last season. So a really big family of bowlers and sports people. So here's Keller, his last. Look at this. Or is it? Oh, that's a good shot. Late dip. Mm. And for second at sort of 12 o'clock, but it's uh, not left much room for Tom. And we're going to see Tom switch to his forehand, I think. Yeah, you can see yeah. that on the mat. I see Keller, of course, still has one to play. They're just struggling a wee bit, um, those opening three ends. This is tracking well if he's on the he's outside the of that and just flicks it away for a couple. Didn't quite get it where he yeah, wanted. Might it. still hold the shot. You see, it's looking like a pretty dim, miserable day. Look at that rain, John. There's an umbrella. No, thank you. <laughs> Hamish makes his way very slowly back to the mat. But the players, as you said, they're going to be used to this sort of stuff. Well, people will be saying, well, he plays out of Cobden, so, you know, Greymouth area, he'll be used to it. <laughs> However, uh, West Coast has had possibly some of the best weather in the country over the last couple of years, haven't they? Had some great spells of fine weather, and we grimaced a wee bit. Has he gone a bit wide here? Well, I think so. You see that one ball of Tom Tyro is at six o'clock. Well, it's coming back, John. Look at that. wide, was it? It wasn't too wide at all. That was really just overcooked it a bit. That could have produced a great result. So it's a single with the blue paddle going up. So Tyroa has a single. We've got a brave marker out there. Do you know who that is? Uh, Richard Hocking is the marker okay. for this game. He would have played in a number of these himself. I think um, maybe slightly over that 26 requirement. I see Tom delivering the jack with some pace. There it is, a metre up from the two metre mark. It looks on the screen, it's just starting to pull a bit out there, is it? The yeah, I was speaking to people this morning, they spoke about uh, the surface, this green in particular, as we see the 
what the players can see. It's been one that pulls reasonably quickly, so I wouldn't be surprised, John, as we watch that ball come into the head, to see some oh, rain or some shot. water sort of pull up pretty quick. But uh, it looks like <laughs> it looks like the players are making it look like there's no rain out there. I can tell you the, the conditions wouldn't be much fun. I don't think we'll see any slow play then. No, no. There's no time limit, of course, but um, they'll want to get this done and dusted. It's uh, quarterfinal time, so the winner, I think, uh, receives $1,000 in this event. But it's more the prestige of winning it. Um, we talked about uh, Taylor Bruce having, having won this, but a uh, man we saw last week on our coverage from the Morrinsville event, Taylor Horn, won it twice in 2020 and 2022. Um, Anthony Uele, uh, who's here, was playing in this, uh, won it in 2021. But names that you'll, re you'll recognize are Shannon McElroy a couple of times in 2008 and 2009. Um, Chris Lalever, who's been a New Zealand representative, of course. Sheldon Bagri Howley won it in 2016. Uh, Seamus Curtin and his good mate Finbar McGuigan won it in 2018 and 2019, respectively. So some really top names have won this event over the years. Absolutely. And one that... The first uh, woman, sorry, sorry. The first woman to win it was Misty Arnold in 2011. And I said to you earlier, what, what happened to Misty Arnold? Did she keep on playing? I, you know, I haven't heard her name at all, so... I'm sure someone will text you uh, uh, and let you know. Yeah, I wouldn't mind knowing. Where she is. Know, yeah. Always, always time for a comeback in bowls as well, John. Yep, yep. And certainly, if you've won the um, Burnside Under 26 singles, I'd say that would indicate that you've got no lack yeah. of talent. Yep. Oh, look at that rain! It is beginning to pull out, at, pull out there now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. On the forehand with a bit of weight. Quite a bit of weight here. He's going to need this bowl to turn back in. Not to be, uh, but, I mean, two exceptional bowls there by Tom Toro, really. He's put them both within six to eight inches of the jack and challenging conditions. So we see, look at him making his way back there to the mat, and you can see what you're talking about, John. <laughs> it's beginning yeah. to fall a little bit. Well, I think you'll hear him walking back soon, won't you? It'll be this <laughs> squish, squish, squish. So oh. Toro leading two to one, holding a couple on this end. First to 21. On the forehand, beautiful be reluctant delivery. Reluctant to call the players in too, I think, Alex, because it, it does upset the um, timing of the sh schedule. But Yes, and to be, um, and I know it's hard to believe, but the, the forecast is for the rain to clear about now. And I look out the window yeah. and I can see that there is a little glimmer of the sun out there somewhere. So... With a bit of luck, uh, we'll see the um, the rain go away and the sun will be out by the end of this game, John. Yeah, well. Even the, the optimist I am. Yeah, this game, I, I reckon. Just say the end of this end. <laughs> oh, let's, let's not go too far. That last bowl by Tyro Oz was almost spot on. He, I thought he might have changed his hand, but he was playing that, in, that hand so Could well. Get a good it's result here. That is a good result. Ooh, no. Not a good result. No. Nearly. So some really good bowls there from Tyra coming down with us. He was holding two and he managed to get around the two short bowls playing the forehand. And then with that one from Callagher, almost hauled it back his way, but still dropped a couple anyway. Just looking for the marker's uh, signal. Was it two or is it three? Um, good question. Uh, Tyra has the mat anyway and the jack. See there, yeah, really biffing it down too to get it down somewhere towards the two meter mark. He's quite handy. He quite wants to play those longer ends. And there he is, on his backhand side. Plays in that, or has played in the South Canterbury team from a quite a young age when he was. Um, not long out of Timaru Boys High School and was a singles player on the South Canterbury team. And it's quite a strong South Canterbury team too with the likes of Barry Andrews and Sean O'Neill and so on. And uh, as he admits, you know, it wasn't while he was battling to get into the team, all those uh, players who'd been around a long time helped him immensely. So they've encouraged him and 
He's produced the goods over the years. Absolutely has, and you can see that beautiful first bowl of Tom's. He's in fine form. And look at this here from Hamish. Oh, these guys are putting on an exhibition of bowls, really. Very grooved delivery. Barry Andrews, of course, uh, Tom Tyro's coach. And isn't there an interesting statistic? Was he a good cricketer, Barry? Did he do something? Oh, yeah. Some yeah, ridiculous some ridiculous statistic that Barry Andrews achieved in, in the cricket, I can recall from maybe another commentary we did. I couldn't tell I you what the statistic is. I think he would have is. told you about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it once or twice, I'm sure. <laughs> I've been quite the impressed. They call, called him a rat. He, he won a National Fours title with um, O'Neill and uh, the late Rod Dorgan. And who else was in that four? Just escapes me for a moment. But, um, yeah, really, really outstanding group of bowlers there. Strengthened lately by Mr. Wakefield arriving from the para New Zealand team, eh? Yes, and he, um, I Wakefield. believe his first representative fixture was uh, a victory for the South Canterbury team over the Canterbury team, if I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah, and I think we'll hear, we've heard about that a few times. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Hamish so Callaghan. Callaghan now. He's, he, gosh, I like his style too. I haven't seen Hamish play before, but a lot of people will have seen him. He's been the um, West Coast Senior Player of the Year the last two years, and here he is. He's uh, just 18 years of age, so that says a fair bit. Indicating one to Tom, one to the blue pedals, the, the marker. So he's holding one, and he's on his backhand here. Steering down the bowl. So he must be holding that shot to 12 o'clock. He's just trying to clear the front stuff. Look at that. Oh, he has Look two. at that. Oh, it's as good as it gets, isn't it? That's perfect balls. What do you do here, John? Well, I think he's got the, the back bowl, hasn't he? So mm. the one that's not far past the second shot. Might just try to push the jack back a wee bit. Yeah, he's going for a wee bit of a run shot at it. Well, he's Wonder. not a mile away either, is he? He could get rid of them both. One. Oh. Well, well, that'll be good. You see the jack goes shot anyway. back. And it depends whether his... Oh, it has it stayed on. So he might have a couple out of that toucher in the ditch, or is it not? No, it's been oh. picked up. So From this angle, it looked like that was in, but it can't have been. Right, what's happened? We'll see an indication. Single. Yeah. Well, unless the he, uh, the marker picked it up and said, yeah, no, it wasn't the toucher in the ditch. So there we are. So that's, well, in fact, it didn't make contact with uh, Jack anyway, did it, that bowl of his. But certainly very good tactics there because he knew even though the back bowl was only a matter of half a metre past the Jack, it was still the back bowl. And if he could punch the Jack into the ditch or take carry it further down, then he was... Um, in the money, so good shot, last shot, it's five to two now. So it was a three on the previous end to Tyro. Yeah, very good bowl from Hamish Keller. A lot of confidence in that shot, really, wasn't it? Yep, yep. Oh, it's back end here, so first to 21, as you said, John, no time limit. And a good, a reasonable first bowl there from Hamish. The players will be on, you're on high alert in these situations because it's raining, so you're thinking to yourself, well, at some point, the green's going to change on me. Things are going to be different. So you're trying to understand that if you miss, is it because I've played a bad bowl or is it because the green's changing? You know, what, what's going on here? That's a good well, shot. I just love this from Tyroa. You know, a lot of players would have stood up there and say, oh, well, I'll have to change my hand and I have to play the backhand because my opponent's got that ball close. But he wasn't. He's played that hand coming in this direction really well. So... I mean, his first bowl is right on target. Yeah, just backing himself to be good. Yep. Well, Hamish, that's a good correction as well. This is a lovely game of bowls to be watching. Yeah, yeah. So he yes, might have to change his, and he is changing his hand here. So on his back end. And that's because, as we can see, it is. I mean, it's it's more blocked than it was, isn't it? That forehand side yes, because yeah. of Hamish's last bowl. So Tom Look just at the switching. Weight control. Weight control of 
Both these players, perfect. I'm oh, very impressed by these two. It's a lovely shot. Hamish just asking Richard Hockey a question. I think it'll be to... Uh, am oh. I holding shot? So, yes, he is holding shot. That was quite uh, useful of Richard to use the paddle, not only for yeah, the television yeah. audience, but also for Hamish. That's good. Yeah, now now the better question, and the one that I expected was, you know, where is the jack and my shot in relation to the jack, or where's Tyro's bowl in relation to the jack? Running after his marching bowl. down after this. They're allowed to come after the after their third bowl. It's in the zone again, isn't it? It is. I think he might have been looking to draw past oh, based on the body yeah. language. Yeah. yeah, he's frustrated there. So now Tyro can, of course, use that shot bowl if he's in that zone. He could use that shot bowl of Keller's to sit it out. And, yeah, well, I think that's what he was hunting too, wasn't he? Mm. So either either draw the jack back to himself, that one to the about 7 o'clock as we view it. So there's opportunities for both players here to, uh, to score numbers, in fact, if Keller had just was a bit short with his previous one. That's that risk and reward situation, isn't it? Yeah. I think Gallagher, he I mean, he just needs to go past, really. I think that's what he'll opt to play on his forehand side anywhere at 6 o'clock. That's good yep. news. Recognises the danger there if Tyro does move the jack. He, Tyro could go a couple or three up even, so he just needs to be aware of that. It's sort of a almost a defensive mm. bowl, this one here. Or if he can sit to the Tyro a second shot out, that'd be handy. That's a good place for it. Good enough. That means uh, Tom has to play a more precise bowl now, doesn't it? On his probably yep. on his backhand side, so that's to the right of your screen as you see it. And he can afford to be a little bit narrow because he could wick off any of those blue bowls that sit at sort of ten or eleven o'clock to your screen. And and in that case, Alex, the jack would come back. To the right as we were viewing it, which, mm. which, as we said, could give him, you know, there's a potential for three shots here. Certainly looks like it, and that's what he'll be going for, taking his time on the back end. He looks wide at a glance, but it's slowing down, so it might be perfect. Look at this! Look at this! Oh, nailed it! Beautiful! Oh, now that's great bowling. So he's probably got a couple out of that now. And you can see the potential for three. And in fact, if Hamish hadn't have put his last bowl where he did, it would have been three, I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. One or two, or oh, they're not too sure. Are we going to have a wee measure? That jack moved a little bit. Nice. Kick out. One it is, only one, and one to Kelleher. Gosh, well, that, we misread that. But certainly some really good bowls on that end. The players thinking through what the opponents might do, what are the dangers covering everything. And Kelleher comes back with a single, so it's five to three. Yeah, it was still a beautiful shot of um, Tom Tyros. It just must be, I'm going to blame the bowls, John. <laughs> <laughs> that split, the split blue and red, and the the split uh, yeah. split blue it was a lovely shot that he played, uh, but wasn't to, wasn't to be. So we do see that five three score line. So this is a quarter final in this Burnside under twenty six singles event uh, in association with the Living House, uh, key sponsors of this event. Yet again, the 20th edition, and we've got two of uh, the country's finest young bowlers in action. 24-year-old Tom Tyro, 18-year-old Hamish Callagher. And uh, speaking of, of the Living House, John, we're going to be uh, joined by the uh, Managing Director, John Pyle, of the Living House after this end for, for an end's worth of conversation about um, who they are and what they do, and to thank them for supporting the bowls. So that's uh, after this end, we'll do that as we Great. see this shot here on the forehand side. Tom Tyro, I've just about lost count, and I'm, I'm easily I easily lose count to be fair, but I've just about lost count of the amount of touches he's drawn early on 
in the heads. He just seems to be smothering the jack with his first two. Here he is here. Very nice delivery. Yeah. Stays down for a long time, doesn't he, after bowling. Now he's upright. No sort of um, Australian follow-through off the mat or anything going forward, is it? It's, he's, he remains quite static on the mat area. And that's the way he likes to play it. We'll watch Callaghan now. Has just asked how far past his jack is or how fast par, far past he went with his last... On the forehand, he's more of an Australian delivery, really, isn't yeah. he? Sort of walks off yeah. the ball. But I Tom... think third ball, too, he wanted to follow it. Now he's yeah. now he's galloping because he might grab a three out of this. Oh, oh, unlucky. Gosh, that jack movement back there would have been really very handy. So Tyroa certainly won't be short with this, this third one. He's holding shot, recognises the danger. We have, we have, I just need to, we've got confusion reigning with the lollipops. Um, Richard Hocking, oh. you see there, that's Tom's bowl going in. Richard Hocking was indicating one to red, and I think Tom said, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's not how it's going. Yep. So we'll just watch them make the walk back there. He's Two got it right this now. time. Two to blue. Yep. <laughs> it's fair enough. Look at that, Hamish. That's why you don't do the lollipops, isn't it? Because of oh. your colour blindness. Can you imagine, John? <laughs> I, but also, I think that's a really good excuse, Alex. Oh, it's a great <laughs> excuse that I've cultivated for any confusion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Hamish, he's two down on the head, according to Richard Hocking, on his forehand. Is that shot still on from though? I don't think because because Tyroa, what he. Did pick up second shot. He it's didn't too... really cover that back area, and this is he's another close. curler coming he's close. in. Oh, oh, he's good done shot. that beautifully well. He was half a bowl away from three there. If he'd been half yep. a bowl wider, it's that long walk back after your opposition's played a good bowl, isn't it? Yeah, when you're holding two and you think, oh, I'm going quite well here. And then, oh, damn. <laughs> Pretty much. Sometimes he I played, think... Uh, he played exactly the shot that Tyrell would have played in the same situation, I'm sure. <laughs> so on the back end now, Tom Tyra one down. Just looking to play a similar shot, really, just on the other the other side yep. of the rink. Resting yep. the bowl. You know, if he if he gets rid of this that shot bowl, then he's he's looking at three. He's not oh, far he's not away. A mile away either, is he? Look at this. Oh, just half a bowl oh, out. Gosh. Look at that for a great group of bowls. These young men are right at the top of their game in difficult conditions, although the rain has eased a little bit. That's a single to Callagher. It's now five four to Tyroa. And a game that shows no signs at all of uh, one player running away, John. No, it's been very no. tightly contested indeed. So Hamish here on his backhand side. Should also point out that our cameras are extremely good, so it's not raining quite as heavily as it looks like it is on your screen as a viewer. Like it is, I mean, it is raining, but it's not quite, not quite as heavy as it as it appears. It's just the camera lenses, uh, they're not bad cameras, John. So they sort of <laughs> okay. they pick up all the bits and pieces. It's, I'd call it more of a drizzle outside at the moment. Not sure who that's playing on the next uh, rink. It looks like that Stokes Valley shirt there. So James Cameron Powell probably, who saw in the bowls 3-5 a couple of times uh, in recent years. Yes, I think so. Delightful opening bowl by Callagher. He 
we are. Second one on the back end. It is incredible how they've managed to colour match their bowls, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think if we got close and picked them up, we'd find that Keller has got sort of more of a greeny tinge in them. I'm not sure, but but that's um, thank goodness that Tyro has got the the split bowl. Double, yeah, yeah, because otherwise we'd be hopeless. I'm more hopeless. Well, we, well, I was going to say we might be hopeless <laughs> anyway, John, but <laughs> it would be more challenging. Yeah. Here we go. Look at this from Tom Tyra on his forehand side. Good shot. Might not be enough, but. There we go, Hamish. Yep, he's holding shot, according to Richard. Are we likely to uh, see some of the uh, other results during this game, Alex? I know it's difficult conditions at the moment down there. I uh, the, should be able to find them. Quarterfinal draws are. Yeah. Yeah, and if, if viewers are interested in finding the results, you can find them on the Burnside Bowling Club uh, website. So if you just Google Burnside Bowling Club, it's all oh, yeah. there. I've got the live scoring as well. That, that's a really good setup. I like the way, I mean, there was not a question I asked myself. Could I not find the answer to on the on the website of the Burnside Bowling Club? <clears throat> not well set out. <laughs> so each we'll of the there. sections, they had uh, four sections of eight, and the um, up-to-date scores were going through all the time. Right, so we have been joined. We promoted it before. We've talked him up a lot. John Pyle, the managing director of the Living House. I was going to say he's in the house, but that doesn't that doesn't roll off the tongue. He's in the room, in the commentary booth. Um, uh, John, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. Yep, th thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, great being here, apart from the weather. <laughs> <laughs> You've really put it on for us here in Christchurch. Yep, no, it, um, tomorrow hopefully turns out to be a, a better day. Oh, we'll be okay, I'm sure. Um, so... Thank you uh, for your, obviously, support of of the Burnside Under-26 um, event, John. Can you just talk us a bit through the Living House? What what do you guys do? What's your what's your business? Yeah, our, our main business is in the insulation, the earth wall, glass wall insulation. We're, we're, we're South, Island, South Island wide. We're one of the biggest users of the earth wall um, product in the, in the South Island. Um, yeah, so um, and with just with all the H1 regulations uh, coming in with new builds and all that, it's uh, yeah, it, the business is growing. Yeah. Brilliant. So if um, if Joe Bloggs is listening to this and they think, oh, that sounds like something that that I want to have uh, a further look at, what's the best way for them to to find out more about you guys? Yep, like they can go onto our website um, www.livinghouse.co.nz um, and or or they can um, yeah see us at. Um, um, we're at um, in Sheffield Crescent, uh, 11F Sheffield Crescent. They can come see us there too. And uh, yeah, and all they all they need to do is that, you know if they're building a new house, uh, send their their plan through, and we do a complete uh, supply and install uh, price uh, anywhere in the South Island. Brilliant. I'm not sure if John can hear me, can he, Alex? But yes, he um, can. Yep. Oh, good, uh, Alex. Yep. It's John Macbeth here. I, 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 I was interested. I'm always interested when a, a sponsor decides to go with a sport or an event. And and what was the key um, attraction for for Living House to to get involved with the Burnside Under 26s? Yeah. Um. Thanks, John. Um. Yes. Um. Like we are local. Um. I was born in into a bowling family. Um. My mother and father were bowlers. Mm -hmm. So they were members of the Dumbeck Bowling Club in in Otago. So yeah, I'm sort of been brought up, and then then Burnside Bowls approached me, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to um, you know um, yeah sponsor, giving something back. Yeah. Oh, well, that's outstanding, and and I think um, any sponsors listening would say what we want to do. We're happy to help, but what we want to see is some sort of return. And I imagine that with your continued support, um, you're getting good feedback from bowlers and their families and clubs. Um, so that's what it is, isn't it? It's um, a two-way street. 
Yeah, uh, so, um, yeah, that's right. So the thing is, you know, we we have to keep the air name, the living house uh, name, out out right in front of everyone. So product, uh, yeah, we, we, air name comes to the top because you know, with with the um, live streaming and everything like that, with the bowl, uh, bowls and Burnside bowls promoting us, uh, yeah, that's uh, oh, you know, brilliant. it just helps our, our business too. Yeah. Have you still got family in Dunbeck or not? Uh, I've got a sister in, in um, Palmerston. Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, not yeah, far away. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, so, great yeah, but, area. Yeah, but um, I used to, you know, used to have uh, an ex uh, um, bank manager in Palmerston, uh, Jim Scott. He used to be an old bank oh, manager of, course. of mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and he was uh, yeah, very high. You know, my my parents uh, went to the World Bowls in South Africa. Um, yeah, the when the way back in those days in the nineties. Oh, when Jim was yeah. playing. Uh, mm. Yeah, with Kerry Kerry Clark uh, took yep. took the tour there. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh well, that's good. So you you're not just a sponsor. You've you've lived bowls. You've played bowls. You understand the game and. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, the bowling fraternity and this particular event is very fortunate to have such a fine sponsor as Living House. Thanks very much, John. Yeah, thank you, John. So we see Tom Tyro on the back end. Gee, when we were, you were chatting in that last end, didn't he play a perler of a last bowl? He was at least one down, maybe two, and he just set the shot and, and stayed there. Um, just perfect weight. It was really fantastic to grab a single and go to 6-4. So, John, well, there's two Johns. So, um, John Pyle. <laughs> it's challenging when you're doing an audio broadcast, isn't it? You said that your parents have played a little bit of outdoor bowls. Did you dabble much yourself? Have you played? Have you played any any of this game? Uh, no, I haven't actually at all. My br my, br my brother plays in Dunedin, but uh, yeah, I haven't actually uh, uh, dabbled into the b bowls uh, yet. <laughs> yet, yet, yeah. yeah, that's the operative word, isn't yeah. it, for <laughs> for bowls? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but you know, I like you know, you know, with my parents uh, um, playing bowls, you know, coming, you know, through. You know, when I was young, yeah, it was bowls, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that was great that you took that trip to South Africa for bowls. That's a few years ago now, but that's really good stuff. With A yeah. lot of top bowlers came from that area, and uh, you mentioned Jim Scott, and Jim and Ruth have probably tuned into this, so uh, Jim's wife, because they, they follow it so closely. Here we go, another... Delicate bowl coming up here from Tyra. If he could just sit that shot and move the jack slightly, he'll get. Oh, oh he didn't quite oh, do it. Goodness gracious me! So somehow there's That's he's put a bowl within a foot of the jack, and there's two other ones that are closer from Hamish Kelleher. What a game yeah. of bowls this has been so far. High class. It certainly has. And, and, you know, we get a lot of comment, Alex, from people watching the Australian games, you know, and say how quick they are and, you know, how the, how accurate they are. And we're seeing exactly that the same sort of thing here. They're, I mean, they're not be the, might not be as fast, but they're standing, as we see Callaghan now, just taking it all in, a bit of a smirk as he <laughs> thinks, a, right, what do I do? It's a bit of a commentator's make... curse, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they, uh, but he's, he's just wants, look, he takes the line and goes for it. They're selecting their shots very quickly. They're just looking to make it three, so he's got those two bowls, one at one o'clock and one at sort of half past two, I suppose, as the first two shots. So he's looking to draw a third one in here, Hamish Kelleher, and to make it three on this end. He's wow, done it too. That. That's yeah. great stuff. And Tom Tyro brings the mat down quite slowly because he loses the lead in this game. He was 1-0 down after the first, uh, but then he went to 2-1, 5-1, uh, then 6-4, as it was playing this last end. Now he drops a three. So Kelleher leads by 7-6 in the race to 21. Oh, it's back inside here.
look at his delivery hand just sort of staying s fingers outstretched as he just sort of tries to direct it a wee bit and from right. where he's standing. Well, gosh, it's it worked. worked out well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah. He couldn't put that hand in between that bowl and the jack. <laughs> Here's Tom on his forehand side. Played this side. Well, they both played each side of the rink. There's no major issues at all. Oh, wow. Absolutely wow. beautiful. He just doesn't want it to fall in. That's great. Unbelievable stuff, really. So, just asking Hamish how far away his bowl was from the jack, and Richard Hocking very quietly could hear him say, a bowl and a half away from the jack, so a little bit of space there. So last one for you, John Pyle, not John Macbeth. Uh, we would like you to hang around, please, uh, John Macbeth <laughs> from Realme. <laughs> uh, you know, quite important to the commentary. Uh, but John Pyle, you know, Living House um, sponsorship, which has been appreciated for the under-26 uh, Birdside singles. And we've told people that they can find you with your um, uh, website. Is it also easy enough to give you guys a phone call? Who, who will we get through to if we call that 800 number that I can see in the in the distance? Yep, you'll, you'll get through to our office. Office, So, yep, you can call that, uh, you know, uh, yep, seven days a week if you want. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So it's 0800 434 600 uh, for the, the office of the Living House. And if you want to find out a little bit more about what they do, you can see on your screen there... John Pyle, uh, www.livinghouse.co.nz. Uh, thank you very much, John. We'll continue to plug you guys throughout the broadcast and your um, support is much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers. A toucher coming in there from Hamish Callagher, but has it given him the shot? Might well, see the finger, we might say measure. I think it's a measure. I'm not willing to guess here. Maybe it's two touches, John. It looks pretty mm. close. Yeah. You can see there, it's a slightly better angle. I don't think it's touching that bowl at 1 o'clock. So I think that Tom Tyra has the shot there. If I had to put my, my house on it, which I don't have. So Tyra are going to play that forehand now. Mm. Good track again. Got past it clean. It's an interesting situation here, isn't it, for Hamish? Because we can see... Oh, look at that head. He's one down. But it's such a narrow head. There's that bowl of Tom Tyros that you can see at 11 o'clock. I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what I would do, John. Yeah, I'd rather be Tyro, um, really, because his <laughs> options are... Are more obvious. Oh, I don't know. And I suppose you know. Well, if he plays onto that, set his the second shot, which is the ball just to the right of the jack. If he comes down, and I oh know he's going to play the other hand, so he's not going to on the forehand notice of me. I suppose he could still come under and uh, go onto his you know collision ball, come onto the shot that's just. Um, north or towards him of the bowl at 12 o'clock or he could just come round this sit Tom Tyro out and end up with three or he could be short that's the um, he could be short and that's just the say, third option and yeah Tom. or possibly saying to himself I'm not sure that Richard Hawking's right I think I might have the shot there <laughs> decisions 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 yeah look at that score seven six to Hamish Callagher You can see there, that's what it looks like yeah. on the bowler side. It doesn't look any easier, really, does it? That's, no. um, if you've got one there and it's the last bowl, I wouldn't be trying super-duper no. hard if I was <laughs> if I was Tom. As we see the bowl make its way down the green on the forehand. So we're pretty sure, I mean, everything we've said has rested on the assumption that Tom is holding the shot, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. 
no reason to think that that's not the well, case. Mind you, um, well, it's probably just because uh, Toro played the last bowl, but Keller is coming down with the mat. One red oh, was one to kill shot. Him. Well, there you one. go. Uh, I'm glad I got okay. that in just at the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we still our commentary was still correct, but it <laughs> it required Tom to be holding one, and that's why he he played his last bowl because I, I suspect yeah. uh, had he not been holding the shot, we wouldn't have seen. Or had he been holding the shot, sorry, I don't think we would have seen Tom play a bowl then, because it certainly looked pretty precarious, didn't it? And this is encouraging. Richard's taken his hood hood off, so. The rain may well have ceased totally. Yeah. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that we're going to get some sunshine. We were talking to a, a Burnside member earlier on today, um, Colin and myself, when we were setting up, and he said the interesting thing about Christchurch is that you could literally have uh, four seasons in a day. You'll start bowls, and it'll be sunny, and then by lunchtime it's hail, and then you get some rain in the afternoon, and then full circle back to sun <laughs> yeah. at the finish, and we're certainly seeing that here. Tom on his backhand. That's a lovely bowl. They have not been far away at all, have they? And just as you, we're watching this, just to recap, it's the... Um, Quarterfinals of the Burnside Under 26, sponsored by Living House. 32 players, and there are eight women here, 24 men. And the youngest player is 14. And, of course, the oldest is 25, because it's under 26. Um, the youngest player is uh, Liam Hill, who's 14. He's from Ellerslie. And then uh, David Motu is 16 from Mount Eden. A year ago, so they were 13 and 15 then, they both played in this. And they qualified to play in this uh, the top division and met in the quarterfinal. So Liam, the younger, uh, went on to the semifinal and played against Taylor Horn, the eventual winner. So, you know, when I said earlier that people call us a bowls as for oldies, it's an old person sport, and it sure is. Anyone can play it. To at whatever age they are, but you know the younger players, such as we talk Liam Hill there, just um, playing some staggering bowls at that age. Yeah, as these two have too it in there when they first took it up. That's what I think. I mean, I just I, I obviously love the game, but I think it's brilliant that you could be literally anyone can play, anyone can play it well. I've seen sort of twelve-year-olds who could hold their own with like a ninety-four or ninety-five-year-old. Yep. It doesn't matter. You know, you know, you can play a bowl. Um, that's fine. And now we even have things like the bowling arms as well to make uh, stuff easier. So literally anybody can play this game and anyone can be competitive. And I challenge you to find any other sport that you can say that about. Yep. I do have some updates, by the way, John. I had a look at the um, Burnside website and they've got live scoring from the quarterfinals onwards. So uh, in Division 1, John T. Horwell is 8-4 uh, up over Kira Burke, who is the Australian, one of the Australian representatives. So John T. Horwell winning that match 8-4. Anthony Ulay was 11-5 up at the last count. So he's a previous winner of this event. Uh, Nick Carhill trails Aidan Takarua 4-9. Nick from Queensland, an Australian representative in this event, so he's um, being sent over by Bowls Australia, and obviously uh, this game here, which is 8-6. So some good games going on. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Oh, I don't want to say it, but it looks like the rain might be... I can't see the rain anymore. Truly a good sign. On the I, back end. I, I looked through the um, the scores before we started on this, um, and there was only one player who was unbeaten. I think that was Anthony Uli, but that was after five rounds. Yes, and he lost a game earlier on today. Okay. So I think um, I'm pretty sure everyone's lost at least one game, John, which sort of yes, speaks yeah, to the... Yes, that would be right. Then if he's been beaten, he, he was the only unbeaten player. So, so the competition's really hot now this is an opportunity for Tyroa to regain the lead he's certainly holding a shot down there 
playing the forehand. Hamish Kelleher perhaps ruining ruining that last shot of his. We went through that big gap. It was a solid invitation. Mm. And it wasn't super duper on either. The shot he no. played. Just almost Ooh. a bowl on frustration. And Tom overplaying that. That's uh, yes. a poor effort from Tom. But he scored the one. And I'd yep. say second shot would be Hamish's. So it'll be 7-8 in this race to 21. So we see Richard Hocking, the marker, holding his lollipop up. Now you talked earlier about um, locals saying how quickly this green can pull when it's raining. Mm -hmm. and I suppose now we've got to work out how quickly it gets rid of that water and the way Tom Tyroa was he was having to sh shove the jack down to get it to the two metre this time he sent it well past so since it may be already there's a slight change in the pace yeah I would agree and it would make sense um, that that would rain reasonably quickly this green so the pace will change and it'll be the player that adjust the quickest I suspect So, opting to play the backhand here, Hamish Gallagher. There, as we saw, Tom lead off on the forehand side. Just pretty much what's been happening in this game, hasn't it? We've seen Tom prefer that, that ditch hand. Certainly coming in this direction, mm. I recall you commenting on it, John. Yeah. Oh, that drift across. Players doing their jobs. One's turning the score over, the other's chalking the board. <laughs> Here we go. A good correction there. Very good shot. If he hasn't got it with his first, he certainly got it with his second, um, Tom Taro, in this game. But very impressed with his first two bowls. Of course, um, if you are tuning into the coverage, thank you very much. Feel free to share it to whoever you feel like sharing it to. Bowlers, non-bowlers, friends, not friends. <laughs> whoever tickles your fancy, you know, we want to share this, um, the broadcast of the the bowls far and wide. So thank you for tuning in and we'd encourage you to, to share it with whoever. Back tomorrow from, when did we say? 8.30, I think, is the, the first yeah, game. Yeah. So that's semi-finals, is it? semi-final at 8 30 and the final whenever the semi-final is finished and we'll both be yep. broadcast here live from the burnside bowling club and sure to be some good bowls i mean this is a it's not just a quarter final it's a quarter final and the standard here has been absolutely exceptional so no reason to think that the final would be any different we've had some really compact heads mm. these players have been just on top of each other Bowl for bowl, the last head was a little bit loose, and well, this one would be one of those that you'd say it's possibly the loosest we've seen for a while, but yeah. still, you know, there's, oh, yeah, that, that, you know, the weight's just a, a bit tricky at the moment, isn't it? The, none, not one bowl past the jack, which is unusual for these players. They've been either on it or fractionally over. They've played those perfect weighted bowls. We'll see what Tyro does now. You'd think that he won't be short this time. Oh, he's oh, not happy. Oh, that's not a happy man. But but tight, is he? We'll find no. out. Maybe he's overplayed it. Yeah, yeah. He knew the moment that left his hand. Almost He almost knew before he let it go, John, <laughs> based on <laughs> yes, that reaction. That's right. Yeah. So it's left the door open a wee bit here for Hamish Kelleher. And he's got a fair bit of correcting to do. Long walk back, he's two down. He was leading, he is leading, 8-7. And hasn't really played a bowl that he would be uh, pleased with in this end. So last go, last effort. So I'm Keller has come from the West Coast of Christchurch to, yep, yeah, to further his studies. And Tyro completed his uh, and 
qualified accountant. Here he goes. Oh, let's just go to Zafanda. Oh, just to so the bounce back comes from Tyra. He regains the lead at ten to eight. Uh, nine to eight. You can see there the spread of the bowls. Nothing passed. So those two bowls at twelve o'clock of Tom Tyro's uh, gaining the shot. And Richard Hocking there indicating the two to Tom. Very precise delivery, doesn't he? Yeah. On the back end. Now, there were chalk, chalk marks here at the beginning of the day, but of course, um, if you're going to get a bit of rain, they just sort of vanish into the green. Where's he gone? Maybe he's gone to change his jacket, potentially. He just duck, ducked off here. I wondered whether it was jacket or quick toilet break normally they don't I just see that's where Tom's first bowlers Richard Hocking standing there waiting very patiently I mean they did look to be fair the players they looked a bit damp didn't they um, yes, yes after the first few points and it is no time limit so I wouldn't begrudge him going to find something and he's back he's returned does he have a new jacket on no no I don't think he does Maybe just a yeah, comfort stop, John. I think so. On the forehand. Just overplaying that one. You can start to double bluff yourself sometimes in the rain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bowls is hard enough. See there in the background, Adam Bailey, just strolling sort of just off camera. Uh, gold medalist in the World Diff Games recently. That's right, yeah, yeah. So he was playing in this, isn't he? Yes, yeah, it's a good, uh, very good mix. And Tom making his correction on his backhand side. Looks like some people have finished, so I'll see if I can find those results, John. Okay, I'll talk while you do that. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll see what the break has done for Hamish Callagher. Now trials by 9 to 8. It's, it's um, The biggest gap we had was a 5-2 advantage to Tyroa. So he makes the change. Nice correction and holds the shot. I've just discovered um, that I neglected to mention there's actually four divisions of post-section because you get uh, you get divvied of through course, in the yeah. four divisions. So uh, yeah. when this end is completed, I'll rattle through the results for any inter intrigued uh, watchers or listeners. And there has been a couple of um, a couple of wins come through from that as well. Oh, now this is interesting, isn't it? That's two from Tom Tyro that have gone a couple of metres over. Mm. Just by far and away, the furthest yeah. he's been away from uh, the jack the entire game. Hamish Kelleher on the back end. So Tom Tyro, he does have a bowl close, that one. that sits at 9 o'clock to the jack. Hamish getting down onto that. So he's guaranteed a shot. Interesting. Yeah, no wind-up, not looking at... There's only one down, so it's drawable for him. Yeah, try and draw Play as close as possible. Really beautiful shots, both these players. That's a better line from him. This is pretty good stuff here. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Make its way back in. Yeah, it's yeah, a very put-together bowl, isn't it? Green perfectly. So.
so one shot to Callagher at the moment. I'd suggest you'll be thinking about playing the forehand here, John. He's got that bowl that sits at six o'clock and the one that sits at oh, half past two to the jack, so it might be tempting to switch to the other the other hand. Yeah, because if he continues with that hand that he's on and um, misjudges it, he could tickle the jack back. But no, he's staying there. It's also, you know, his last bowl wasn't far off just oh, sitting true. on his own shot, so... It might be just what he thinks. If I can just sit on my own, that'll be two shots for me, probably. Absolutely. On his backhand. This is a lovely line. I know yeah. absolutely nothing, John. Look at this. Yeah, yeah that's, sit that's, on your own. That's two. Yeah, yeah. great That's ball. the shot two I would have played. Very good balls. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shot I would have dreamed, playing, dreamed of playing. <laughs> great stuff. That's a beautiful ball. So two there to Hamish Kelleher. We see Richard Hocking make his way down the rink, holding the two. Now that's judge, uh, backing yourself, isn't it? A lot of players would have done what we were talking about, and that is uh, stay away from the danger. You know, if you're a bit narrow, you might mm. tickle the jack back to the opposition. But he just backed himself because his previous delivery was only fractionally over. Uh, he just made the correction, and there was very little correction required, and he played it absolutely perfectly. So, yep, fair call. He was, yeah, an attacking frame of mind rather than defensive. Now, I promised I was going to read out some results, so I will rattle through them. So, I'll start from Division 4. There's four divisions. So, in Division 4, um, Emily Jin leads Henrietta Scott 12 6. Remember, it's a race of 21. Uh, Jaden Owens. Leads Lee Warburton 13 8. Olivia Mansum Mansa leads Callum Cox 18 9. And Philip, Jim Jr., and Liam Hill are locked together at 16 points apiece. In Division 3, Rebecca Jelfs uh, trails Caitlin Thompson 11 12. Liam O'Connor has been defeated by Davy Motu 9 21. So that's one of the games that are over. Uh, Dylan Campbell has been defeated by Ashley Jeffcoat, 121. So I think Dylan wanted to get into the, the warm, dry <laughs> club room as quickly as possible <laughs> there. Um, and Adam Bailey, who we mentioned earlier, 17 7 up on Mitchell Scott. We're halfway, John. So in Division 2, uh, Braden Casweir is leading Cameron Hortle, 11 5. Uh, Ryan Hill is 11 17 down against Jacob Inch, of course, the brother of um, the magnificent Caitlin Inch, who's doing such a good job skipping for the New Zealand side at the moment. Uh, Adam Blucher has lost to the current Women's Champion of Champions national singles uh, winner, Briar Atkinson, 5 points to 21. So a good one there from Briar. Uh, Nathan Gooden are leading 13 points to 8 over James Cameron Powell. And then in our Division 1, We've got uh, Hamish Callagher and Tom Tyrell. We know that score. It's 10-9 to Hamish. Uh, Nick Cahill trails Aidan Takadua at four points to 13. Anthony Ule, a previous winner of this event, has won his game against Adoni Wichman Raroa, 21-6. Uh, so that's uh, he'll be feeling pretty good about that. I think Anthony uh, won it two years ago and Taylor Hall won it last year. So looking to make a near back-to-back -back thing. And then John D. Hall will leading the Australian uh, Kira, Kira Burke uh, 10 points to 5 in his race to 21. And that is enough talking from me this end, John. Well, wow. oh, that's good, good update. So by that we've got Ule through, David Motul through, Ashley Jeffcoat through, Brian Atkinson through. So there's um, at least five have got through. Uh, in interestingly, you mentioned the Philip Jim Jr. and uh, Emily Jim are both representing Cook Islands. Uh, here today, so uh, yes. for this tournament, yeah, we had a good day. Uh, you mentioned Nick Cahill of uh, of Australia, so we've got um, a couple of uh, Australians over here. Uh, the other being uh, Adoni Witchman of uh, Meriden's Club. Yeah, it's good to have that international flavour to any event. So we see, look at that. Oh, I was going to say it's a walk back, but it's like a would call it a jog back to the to the mat there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On his forehand. Lovely delivery. And while I was rambling on about scores, look at the head that they've built here, John. Yes, yeah. And he's, uh, I'd say he's holding two, and uh, this will make it three. 
It's a great bowl. How's the weight? Oh, Ooh, smidge. Maybe not. Just a smidge short. So, Tom Tyrell, what do you do if you're Tom here, do we think, John? Oh, well, just a draw, play, play draw. that backhand, I reckon, even though he has been preferring the forehand a bit on this, uh, coming in this direction, but you play the backhand and just um, sit on that shot bowl, the one that's just past the jack, or Makes just sense. dead draw it. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah, probably what, exactly what will happen. He'll probably play the forehand and... <laughs> And at times I've said uh, with absolute confidence something that's yeah. going to happen in a game of bowls and not been correct. Well, we've started well. He's playing the backhand. <laughs> We're on a winner here, John. And on his backhand, he is. Look at this. I think he's pretty close. Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's not. Looking at, yeah. He was looking to reach through there, obviously. I've just pushed it wide. And a little bra a mini break in this game, you'd almost say. Yeah. Yeah, when you look at it there, Alex, you see that jack which has just been picked up. If if Tyro had made contact with the shot bowl or the jack, he was he was looking good. So I didn't see was that two then. It was indeed. It was a two. This is a race to 21 in this quarterfinal match between Tom Tyro of West End Timaru and Hamish Kelleher of Hallsville Christchurch slash Cobden Greymouth. And Kelleher leads by 12 to 9. That's the well, equal biggest break we've had in the match because Tyroa led by 5 to 2 at one stage, a three shot advantage. On the forehand here, Hamish Kelleher. Oh, this bowl, I think this bowl might be flying. We'll just see. Yeah. Look at that. Into, is it going to go into the ditch or is it going to stop? Into the ditch it is. That'll be. He'll be quite surprised at that because he's been playing really well. Sometimes it just sort of doesn't stop. <laughs> that's more something that you and I would be used to seeing, John. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On the back end. Now, I was just going to, what was I going to say? We mentioned uh, Tom Tyro is from the, the West End Club in South Canterbury. It staggers me, or it consistently staggers me every time I remember it, that there are three Three West End clubs in New Zealand. There's one in New mm. Plymouth, uh, one in South Canterbury, and one just, uh, well, not even down the road, literally uh, the next-door neighbours to the next-door neighbours of the Ponsonby Bowling Club, which doubles up as the Bowls New Zealand office. There's a West End club there. Three West Ends in one country. It seems a little bit, um, they need to be more imaginative with the naming of the suburbs, I think. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you'll find there's plenty of other clubs which are share the same name around the country some interesting name clubs actually on that um on that note isn't there john there's a night a night caps club i feel and there might be um yep. a couple of other clubs that have some really interesting stories behind the names yes night caps spent a couple of eventful nights there in my youth <laughs> oh look at this lovely bowl here Beautiful from Tyro. Bowl. That's like it from Tom just touches and sits. So holding a couple there. Uh, decisions here. Now Hamish hasn't really come up with smelling of roses every time he's looked to hit something. He's played some beautiful draw shots, but he hasn't been accurate with the aggressive shot. And I wonder, I wonder what he's going to decide to do here, John, because it's one of those times where he might think about attacking. Well, he's got a three-shot lead. Mm. But he doesn't want to drop a three here. Uh, this is well, this is heading in the right direction, isn't it? Eh? Needs well, it to hold. Head, but oh no, he's not holding. No, I thought he was just going to come through that little gap. Options there. So now Tyro doesn't want to, as he did previously with a, a good opportunity, overcooked his bowl. Just wants to get one in there to make it count. Coming across onto that backhand, so I wanted to get around that short bowl of his opponent, which he's done. He's Very done brilliantly. Close. Good home there. Yeah, that's good stuff. So that, at least two, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like a two. One to the one at seven o'clock, and one to the one at sort of 
one-ish, one-ish o'clock. Um, Hamish Kelleher. I don't know what he's going to decide to do here, John. It's not a pretty head, and like you said, he's just eked out a three-point lead. Uh, it's been hard work to get 12-9 up. You'd hate to, to drop a number here. That's right. Is he going, as you mentioned, his run shots haven't been entirely convincing. So that's, I think that's the decision he's making, right? It's just sort of, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? I want to not drop a number. Is it time to be aggressive again? See if it can be third time oh, lucky. Second shot's a good shot, as they say. Mm, absolutely. It's not on a bad track if it holds its line. Could get a bit of luck off the front bowl at 12 o'clock. A little wick. Well, no, it's a good bowl. That's well played. Yep. Still one to the blue. So it's about trying to find a bonus bowl now here, isn't it, John? Do you think, uh, what hand do you think it, it, it'll be drawn well, on? He's played that. He's He's played that backhand really well coming mm. this way, hasn't he? This last bowl is the, the back one that we can see at the bottom of your screen. So does he want to come try and just come around that? His weight's got to be perfect so that even if he does nudge that um, second shot of colour, is it not going to make any impact on this score there? So just a nice draw. On the backhand, yeah, he's, he's heard that nice track you know he's made sure it's not going to be yeah. violently narrow and it's every chance to draw oh, a second gosh. shot here oh, every a chance ball. to draw a second shot brilliant yep that'll do it that's pretty impressive and certainly grabs the mat for one and you would say that we'll see two lollipops of color blue going up there they are there's two lollipops and so it's now 12 11. outstanding last bowl there by tyro this uh, yeah. clinch game just keeps on giving. It's been some like great, look at, just look at great this shots. isn't just a stand up and throw the jack down, is it, Alex? This is premeditated where he wants that jack. He watched it all the way to where it finished. It wasn't just uh, toss it down and go back and pick up your bowl. <laughs> Very much so. You see Tom just taking his time on his forehand. Goodness, this has been a good game of bowls to watch. John, 12-11. I think that's a fair, a fair reflection. Staring after his bowl. Hamish now on the forehand. preferred this looks to be a nice line underneath 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 yeah good who, shot he likes that just asking quick the question there Hamish it's nice too um when you know because the, these guys will know Richard uh, and he's a very good bowler in his own right. And that makes it, just gives you a little bit of confidence, doesn't it, when you're asking your marker these questions that you know, that, that, that they know, that you know, that they know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're just going to get you know, good Even responses. if you don't get the question out clearly, uh, he knows what you mean. <laughs> the interpretation is there. Yeah. That's what we were saying last week um, with, with the... Um, fours in, in Morrinsville. <clears throat> I was commentating with Barry Hooper, who was um, really good value from, from that event. When Taylor Bruce and Selena Goddard were playing with uh, as part of fours, in, uh, separate fours, the um, communication uh, and the questions that were being asked would have opened the eyes of those 
yeah, pretty much club players, but some of them had done well. It just at the as the way the way that the top international players think and operate. Mm. It was quite a good lesson. Absolutely. Hamish, oh, that's not a bad effort. Just a oh shy getting bogged on Tom's race to twenty one twelve eleven up at the moment is Hamish. And Tom, yeah, well, was it two, two, it two, yeah. Two so I'm, I'm thinking about the forehand, really, aren't you? And then, but he's, yeah. he's, they're all his on the on the backhand he's playing. So onto his own to maybe just promote. But just he knows to... also, of course, that uh, Hamish has got a bowl remaining. Yes, that's probably changed his mind. He just might just match that back one in case there's a bit of action. Yep, that's good. Good thinking, Tom. Lovely line. Yeah. And there you can see the the wider head. So, yeah, a reasonably clear two there. That's a pretty good set of bowls, isn't it? Yes. And decisions so here we for... Might see, oh, yeah. We might see weight here because of the placement of the back bowls. We see if he plays the forehand with a bit of weight, weight turns the red, as we see it, bowl into the jack and pop it back to his own bowl. Um, and that's... A result that probably uh, Tyro was thinking of too. Just needed to cover that in case there is weight. But he hasn't been far off with his weight with the draw either. So yeah, he'll have is... yeah, he'll have his mind. It's just that one ball short with his third ball. Yeah. Will this ball to turn back in? He's not far away. Turn. <laughs> it's not to be. So two there to Tom Tyro, and he's going to take the lead again, John. To yep. un an unlucky number on number thirteen. Uh, we'll Hockey see if it is. So they've played uh, 16 ends, I make it, 16 ends, and we've had 25 shots scored. We've had um, two threes, one to each of the players. Uh, it's been a very tightly contested game indeed. So $1,000 goes to the winner, not of this game, but of the event. And as uh, Alex has mentioned, four sections. And they're all playing uh, quarterfinals at the moment. Post-section play at the moment. Already some of those through. Yeah, and that's it. It is reasonably easy to find. Um, John, if you even just Google Burnside Bowling Club, they've got a well-put-together website, and they've got live scoring there and the uh, the full results for this entire event. If anyone is interested in, in finding it out, and if you can't find it there, if you go to their Facebook page, I believe there is a link there as well. Or you can tune in on the very occasional time where I'll ramble through the, the four sections <laughs> worth of um, results. I was a bit out of breath after I finished. Oh, I think you should do it regularly, <laughs> <laughs> just so you get out of breath. <laughs> Call it exercise. Got to wait there. So we're not quite at that stage where... You know, a three suddenly brings you match point. But a, a, a good score on this end certainly would give the player a big advantage. And Tyra pings this one. But a movement won't have hurt either. The ball. Clubs had some wonderful uh, administrators too, and I think I saw Bill Fowley in the background there a while ago. He's a past president and was one of the huge influences in the World Championships, which were held here a few years ago. So he's a past president, and I think um, Ken Wilson Pine, who's a I think a life member. Oh, lots of really high quality people who've made this club what it is. Yeah, oh, it's been a fantastic club for it's one of the younger clubs actually. I think um, I was looking at the honours board while I was having a hot beef roll, which was delicious for lunch, John. And it goes back, um, I think, to the mid '60s, early '60s was Burnside Bowling Club. So, as bowling clubs go, one of the younger ones, I would say, around the traps, but always been a very well administered, well maintained uh, club, for sure. Lovely to play at. This can't be far away. He's under a bit of pressure here, is Hamish Keller. Yeah, yeah. 
Needs it to stop or to bog on to one of the bowls. Nah, just stopped just nice and clean. That's a good shot there. So just one score. So what do we see here? Do we see anything slightly different from Tyro? I don't think he might play a forehand and just sit on that last bowl of uh, Kelleher's. Mm. He's He'll back himself to, to just, yeah, back himself yeah. to sit for two. It's just what well, Andy does. He's done it so often, hasn't he? Play, play what he's played so well. Oh, no, he is. He's going forehand. On the there forehand. Just beat that last bowl of Callahers. Needs it to hold. I'm not sure if it will. Oh, wouldn't want to slice the jack. Goodness gracious me. Maybe he was trying to rest out the Kelleher's bowl. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, that, that's what I thought was, you know, reach that or beat that. But it would have given him two just to sit and stay, wouldn't it? Mm. So this gives um, playing the backhand an opportunity for a little movement of the jack here from Kelleher to go back into the lead. Movement of the jack would bring it back to his lone bowl, parked there to the left as we see that. Good line. Very close. No, kind of just missed by. So oh, a single the there to the man from West End in Timaru. He comes down with the mat. His opponent picks up the jack and hands it to him. One there indicates. Richard Hawking, done a fantastic job as the marker, I must say. Except for that one time where he got the lollipops a bit muddled around, John, but everyone makes fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Nobody's perfect. No, he's done great stuff. And it has been good, the communication between the players and the marker, I've noticed in this game. Tom Tyra gets ready on his forehand side. See the sign up there in the background, Rawley's. That uh, takes me back a while. Yes. I'm interested. It's still around, but they used to have a, a Rawley's traveller would come around to households way back in the days, um, you know, to sell their tonics, so to speak. They were really a, a big part of uh, everyday life. Oops, I'm the Rawley's man. Knock on the door. <laughs> the Rawley's man. Oh, yes. What have you got today? We've got this lovely cough elixir, which will fix that kid's throat oh okay and some stuff to rub on his chest all that sort of stuff i can't remember exactly. probably all bands but... now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right well good bowl here from Callagher. great shot i remember we used to have a um a little tin of the rawley stuff but i was convinced when i was a kid that they were sort of everlasting because it never seemed just had the same tin for for yeah. like 15 yeah. years probably used it occasionally item, some of those yeah. now yeah, it was fine. It did a good job. It was all good, but it just never seemed to run out. So we never had a need to, to find another one. But great to see they're still up and going. Yep. Look at this here from Tom Tyra on the forehand underneath that bowl. Yes. I, I think. just have done it. One yeah, look at that. To Callaher. Yep. Not the one. That signal would have been just indicating how far sh away the jack was from the shot bowl. Can I have? On the back end. Oh, he doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. Well, there wasn't much danger there. I mean, he's already one down with that, wasn't he? So uh, he could afford to be up to it. Yeah, I think he was uh, so, Tyra, it, it would be asking the... the how what's the situation with that second shot is it past the jack is it jack high jack low yeah this is what tom can see from his end yeah. it's amazing yeah. the depth perception isn't it mm. as we go back to tom delivering his bowl on the forehand side oh, oh. doesn't like it <laughs> i would indicate that he's not that pleased yeah. Yeah. with that bowl narrow and short well god that might be one of his uh, least impressive bowls of the day. <laughs> oh, it wasn't all that narrow, actually. It looked to be narrow when it was coming down, but... Short out of his hand, I think. Yeah. On the backhand. 
couple of steps following it down is Kelleher. His eyes this lit up actually when he let that go. I think he quite likes this. He's close here. Touch of the He's close here. He, oh. What a beaut ball. That's a great ball. That'll be two shots. Absolutely top notch stuff there. That's brilliant. Brilliant. There's no, no, no other word for it, John. No. Have a look how close those two bowls are. You've got the bowl, the toucher, at 5 o'clock to the jack, and then the second shot at 11, exactly what Hamish Kelleher was looking for. What does Tom do here, John? You've got that short well, bowl, that very I'm, I'm short bowl. Uh, the short bowl you know, that's, um, that's his up on the right shouldn't be a problem for him because he's, he's been drawing it so well on that uh, on both hands, obviously, but on the non-ditch hand, so coming down on his backhand, around there and onto the shot bowl. Decisions. Push of his own. Oh, his yeah, backhand. where he's going. Taylor Bruce in the background. Yep, with the green and red uh, jackets of Burnside. So here we go. Oh, it just looks a bit tight. And oh. he might just find that gap, will he? He does. Not the weight to do anything, though. So two-shot advantage here with one to play. This Kelleher wants to make it a three. tied at the moment as we look at it. On the back end. Yeah, so uh, I would call it a more Australian delivery, like you said earlier on. Tends to walk off the bowl, whereas Tom Tyro has a yeah, sort of more classic New Zealand start. Look, look at this! Look at this! Brilliant bowl! Oh, it's unbelievable. That's just that's, that's an outstanding. Yep, really good. So he's back in front now, having conceded five over the previous three ends. And got to a situation where he's two behind. He pricks up a three, a vital three here. And goes to 15, 14 ahead. That was a staggering three. Just, there's been some unbelievable bowls in this game. You wouldn't believe that it was, uh, that the conditions have been challenging, John. You know, oh, it's just, oh. <laughs> these players have adapted. The green will have changed in speed over the duration of this game by a couple of seconds at least. And there's barely been a blip from either of them. Just see Richard Hocking there having a pleasant conversation with Taylor Bruce, who's on the the next um, rink alongside this game, adjacent rink. See this bowl on the forehand. Swallows it. Oh, Not snake quite, of the jack. I'm pretty sure the light, or the, the light, I'm pretty sure the sun's about to break through. The clouds any minute now, John, so I promised the, the viewers some sunshine before the end of the game. And I, I'm, oh, I'm not that optimistic, actually. I was going to say, <laughs> don't get carried away. <laughs> I, was, I was trying, but I can't, yeah. I, can't, uh, I can't do it. Well, roll this, run this out, mate, and you've got a really good one, Tom. Great, pal. That's very good. Good rebounder from dropping a three. Hamish on his forehand now. So 15 14. So there's. Uh, we're into the last quarter of this match. I would not be surprised if it came down to sort of a 21 20 situation, John. Yeah, yeah. Such has been the ability on show. On the forehand. Oh, looking for another one. Hand. Consistency now he wants. Put another one in there. Get some pressure on. Kelleher watches this as it tracks in towards the jack. And this is another fine ball from Tyro. Doesn't fatten it up much. That's good bowling. Yeah, that's good does, stuff. does, however, give uh, Kelleher something just to rest on. So what he'd like to win this end Conceding a single is better than conceding three or four. Is this narrow from Kelleher? Is it going to cut under the jack? 
So, oh, oh, and a chance for another number, John. We've seen ones and twos almost the entire way. And now, mm. you know, Tom's sitting there going, well, I could draw a third shot here. And he's got a bonus four for Famishes to miss. Swings and roundabouts. This is the Top first part. Pendulum in action. Here it goes. Same sort of track. A bit wider, is it? Or oh, is he going to run out of puff? No. Oh, yes. Just run out of puff. Looked to be a wee bit wider off the hand. Didn't quite have the weight He'll be there. really annoyed with that, won't he? Because two perfect bowls and then didn't that. want it to be anything <laughs> other than short with that one. This is what the players can see. So Hamish down his end. You can see that short bowl blocking the sort of slight left of the head. And then those two bowls of Tom Tyros. I think he just has to try and draw this, John. I don't think there's anything yeah, else yeah. on, really. Well, it's all his bowls out to the right. So playing the forehand and, um, you know, any connection of the jack could well spring it out his way. So I think he'd just be looking to make a wee bit of contact with jack or shot, and you never know what will come out of it. He's given himself half jack a chance. Would spring over to the right. Let's see what happens. Still got Not half a, a chance. Away. This is the result, is it? Oh. <laughs> Good ball. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Second shot there. He'll be happy with that. That means if Tom wants to make a number... It's fraught with danger because that bowl of Hamish's that you see at sort of 2 o'clock is a bit short of the jack. So to try and remove it, you run the risk of, of bad stuff happening. I wonder if Tom will just try and draw for a second shot. Yeah, that's why I think the forehand, eh? That, that looks On the appealing. forehand, yeah. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a second shot. If you move it a foot, a foot or two, that's enough for three. and Not that much danger, but you wouldn't want to play with any sort of aggression here if you're Tom Tyra. Oh, no, no, draw draw onto that shot of uh, Hamish's. I think that last shot, just turn it over. That'll be enough. And <laughs> what he doesn't want to do is be a little bit overweighted and push that jack back. Here we go. On the forehand. Heading to a pretty good home, this. Is he up? Out of is he up? I think. Just had that, uh, that, just that fear, I think, you know, oh gosh. But look at the line he had, all those bowls, you know, that you could throw, a, there, there, you put a mat down there, and most of them will be within two mats, and that's pretty impressive. Just a yeah. single, though, to Tyra, this game continues to enthrall. Very 15 good. all. Good stuff. As we see, Tom deliver the jack. Steering it down. The rain has stopped here at the Burnside Bowling. Well, it's just made a lot of me. Literally, as I said, that it started raining. The rain had stopped. And that's, you can see, just a couple of little bits of drizzle going in front of the camera. About 15 apiece. So it's a race to six now. So it's the 20th edition of the Burnside Under 26 Singles in association with The Living House, and we heard from John Pyle a nice chat about his product and why he got involved in bowls and the, the history of that and the um, product that they do and why they're so pleased to be involved with bowls. I like, I like that. So Living House, the sponsors of this, 32 players started, 24 men, 8 women, a couple from Australia, a couple representing the Cook Islands, Ages range from 14 to 25. And this is, uh, these are just two of the players who are here, and they're both playing some exceptional bowls. Certainly a fantastic standard. But time and time again, we've seen, you know, the first two bowls like this, where both players, and this one here from Tom Tyra, have just put bowls. Just pep they're just peppering the jack, really. Oh, it's, it's a delight to watch. So we see the game next to us uh, has finished there. That one which I think was featuring um, James Cameron Powell from Stokes Valley. 
I'll see what I can find out for us, John. Oh, yeah, there might be some more completed games, I'm sure. Again, this one is destined for a pretty good position here from Hamish Kelleher. It'll be second shot. And that's just asking that question of Richard Hocking. I don't know. I think he's saying that is that is the shot. So maybe Tyro is down here. Or was he asking which is second shot? Maybe, yeah, that would be the story. He can use that wing bowl. Oh, he doesn't like this either. Last time he did this, he was short. And he certainly doesn't want to be, or well, if he's short, doesn't want to be uh, whacking that bowl. So the blue tag goes up, so it is Tyro a holding shot. I can tell you, uh, John, that uh, Nathan Gooden defeated James Cameron Powell 21-17 in that match next door. But James Cameron Powell was 13-5 down, 11-1 down, pulled himself back to be within four points. It's a pretty fair effort. Okay. Yep. On the march afterwards, giving it hand signals. Get inside. Don't hit on that. Don't hit on that. He doesn't hit on it. He doesn't oh, hit on oh. it. He just goes past. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Everything happened there. Within half a bowl, really. And uh, Tom yep. Tyro just down to, down to business, holding one on the forehand, looking to make it two now. I think he that wing bowl to the left, as we'll see it in a moment, doesn't like this either, I don't think. Is usable, isn't it? He could get the inside edge of that and it would come in for another shot. Is he yeah. up for this? Is he up? He's Look at this. Look at this. Further. Move it back to your own. That's pretty Beautiful. damn good. Maybe he really liked it. <laughs> maybe yeah, that's what we saw. Like a, a yes, that's a really good bowl. The expression. <laughs> Look at that. Three bowls. Really tight head there from Tom Tyra. Hamish Gallagher. Pointed out. I think he's looking for a kill here because if we look at that, Hamish has got no balls past the head, but the jack's essentially touching Tom's bowl. So any of the jack, it'll shoot out to our right, probably in a four o'clock direction, and the head, it feels like it's short enough that it could be yep. a um, a kill here. You see, he just put his foot backhand, looking at the shot. It just sort of indicated that's what I need to go for. I need to kill this. I'm down three. Yeah. Not a full-on drive. He's just going to nudge it out. Let's see. Oh, oh, Let's see what happens what here. Has he got it? A re-ricochet. Oh. Not quite. So we might just have a three here to a man from West End, Timaru, Tom Tyro. I think it will be a three. We'll see what Richard Now we're getting indicates. into the crunch game. Unbelievable stuff. All right, we'll just... we measure first, is it? I oh, know. Two. Concession. Two there, Two? says mm. Richard Hocking. So he cut it down by one. So it's a good bowl, yep. good result. He'll be happy enough with that, I think, Hamish Gallagher. Yep. Perhaps acknowledging that his run shots haven't been that accurate this game. So thinking, well, I'll just change tack. Change tack a little. Yeah, another good les lesson too there, Alex, for... Uh newcomers to the game isn't it uh, people love to have a drive but if your drive has let you down or hasn't really produced results during a day uh, there are there is the option that option of just playing that nicely weighted shot cut it down I think that, I think that's it right it's about um, understanding how you're playing during the game and sometimes you know, you'll hit your first drive and you might miss another one. You're just on fire. Yep. Other days, if you had a barn door, you still wouldn't be able to hit it. <laughs> so you just yeah, understanding right. understanding what's working for you on the given day and not being afraid to change stuff up, I think, really important. Tyra, a little bit narrow with his first. He's within sight of the finish but there's a long way to go
the not back very end. much activity on the greens at the moment. Just this one game that we can see. Maybe another one over on the far green. As Tyra just adjusts his green. That's all it was required. Well, yeah. I'll tell you that uh, John T. Horwell is through to a semi final, having defeated the Australian Kira Burke. Uh, 21 points to 9 in that game. The other match going on, which we can see little bits and pieces of between Aiden Takaroa and Nick Carhill from Queensland. 17 7 to Aiden Takaroa. And this game, of course, locked almost. Uh, even at 17.15 to Tom Tyra. So some great games going on around the place for sure. Very grooved Important delivery. Ball here for Tyra. Oh, look, it's coming inside his own, which is exactly what he wanted. Certainly got the shot, might it not, he won't have two. He possibly had the shot previously, but I don't think he would have been too sure of that. Just asking the marker there, what's the situation? One blue, one to Tom Tyro, he says. And that far short of the jack, he reckoned. It's good information, isn't it, really, from yep. the... Mark it. So he knows that he can use his own. Just cutting across on the forehand side. Well, now, what does Tyro do here? Does he look to hmm. move that uh, left hand short bowl as we view it? of? Callahers and end up holding four, but with one to play, or does he just draw another one and draw a narrow onto that? It'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I think, I think we'll he might just let's just draw another shot. Don't be fancy. Be happy with turf, and he can hold the two. He's then 19, yeah. 15 up, so just chip away. No one's oh, he didn't look happy with that one before he, the camera switched away. Oh, a little bit of a grimace a bit... on the face. Flick off that. Up and over on that one. Oh, oh well. <laughs> okay. Oh, you take it, don't you? Yep. Yep. You don't want to move the jack, Hamish. And certainly not to the right as we look at it. No, it wouldn't be ideal <laughs> if you're Hamish. I think. Uh, it's all right if you stay with it. If you're stuck right to it, that's fine. But, so, still only one, I would say. Decisions here to be made. So we see Hamish Kelleher on his forehand side. Probably not too unhappy to drop just the one, to be honest. It's a, it could potentially yeah. be a pretty ugly head on the forehand. That's better. He's gone a little bit wider than he did last time when he cut under, so he's playing it safe. He can drop round inside that shot bowl, but not quite. No, he can't. But not far off it. That's a pretty good try. Well, Gee. Very good ball. And we see they're going to measure for second. Richard Hocking will find out how good his eyes are. He said it was one. <laughs> uh, I despise being a marker for this exact reason, John. They asked me who's holding. I'd usually go, well, I'll tell you, but I'd rather you changed it before you got to the other end, please. <laughs> This so, is the first measure we've had in the game. So his young eyes. One, ah, one Richard, he, look, he knew he was <laughs> right. Has he got a grin on his face? Uh, <laughs> yes, he has. Slight grin. Yeah, oh, there we go. See, I was right. <laughs> a grin would be 18. an exaggeration, but I think he knew. 18 to 15. We've played 21 ends. There's no limit to the number of ends. It's just shots if you're not sure about it in the game of bowls a singles match between two of the country's leading younger players Tom Tyroa now 24 
and uh, Hamish Kelleher on the left picking up the ball is 18. It's interesting. Both, uh, um, for a lot. Of sorry, sorry, John. I'll uh, carry on. Carry on. Okay, no, I've finished. I've cool, finished. I'll, you can go now. I'll do my <laughs> bit. I was just going to say it's yeah. interesting. For a long time in New Zealand, our singles games were 21 ends. We were one of the only countries in the world that we played to a set number of ends. Our nationals was 21 ends for a very long time, and then that reminded me that um, I learnt the other month or year uh, that originally uh, bowls was about winning the end, not scoring the points. So the reason we play an odd number of ends in almost all the um, the older events is because if you had an even number of ends, it was you could actually just draw the game because you've won the same amount of ends. It used to be an odd number of ends, so you could win more ends than the other person, sort of thing. So it was um, just the ends one used to be what counted as the as the win. That's good information there, Alex. Oh, absolutely, point. useless information that means nothing to no, nobody. But, but it's, yeah, <laughs> it's stuck in my head for some reason. See, good line here from these players. Amish Kelleher on his back end. He said he's been the senior player of the year for the last two seasons in a row, John, for the West Coast. Yeah. Not a bad effort. Snatches the shot off Tyro. whose weight was perfect with his second, his line was perfect with his first. A combination would be good about now. Tom, and he comes. Oh, does he like it? He looks oh, like he's he does. talking he's down. He's coming after it to have a wee look. He's running after it to have a wee look. Oh, fair enough too. Yeah. That's amazing. What a shot. And he knew it from the time it left his hand. It's always nice to see those sorts of shots close up, aren't they? Get down there. You've yeah. got to be down before your bowl stops anyway as part of the law, but he was enjoying watching that. He's got a little Callahan sniff. looking for a, the same sort of bite with the green. Needs it to run. Needs it to run. Interesting here. So we'll have a look at the head. It almost looks like it's two to Tom. Tyro there, that bowl to the left is only a bowl short. You can see there, I think Richard Hawking's going to give us an indication. What do you think, Richard? You were right last time. Ooh. <laughs> well, if you don't know, you don't know, I suppose. Just one. Uh, do you want to Hamish believe him? That's the question. Hamish. Hamish now has a look from a wee way off. <laughs> well, just a reminder, if you're enjoying this, tomorrow will be even better because, well, not better than this game, better because we've got double games. Double it's the games. 8.30 with the semifinals, one of the semifinals, with constant updates on the non-televised semifinal. And then the final itself as Tyra tries to come around. Oh, that great oh, effort. Gosh. Yeah. How was that about three or four centimetres more and he would have been in there holding two? I have um, just been informed, John, that uh, if people tune in at 8.30, they will find the live stream, but it won't be broadcasting because the final starts at 9 or the semi-final starts at 9 tomorrow. So great that we've been so keen. Uh, but a 9 o'clock start, so those keen bowls watchers, you can get a half hour sleep in. <laughs> or watch the test pattern. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, bowls coming your way soon. It's coming soon, just scrolling along the bottom of the screen if that's uh, what you want to be watching. On the back end, this is interesting. Shot. Yep, last last uh, bowl. And he's certainly playing with some intent here to maybe use his own, push that up. And Get it square. Out of the net, though. Ooh. Oh, gosh, so a single there. To Tyra, maybe a measure, but I don't think so. Yeah, it is a single. And so wow. Tyra moves to 19 shots now, just two away. He's scored on the last four ends when he was down 15-14. Now... First to 21. Yeah, right on. Only two points away. So the winner of this joins players 
who are already through to the semis, such as Briar Atkinson, Nathan Gooden, uh, Jonty Horwell, Ashley Jeffcoat, David Motu, Anthony Uele, um, the others who are close to qualifying, Aidan Takarua, who was playing against Nick Carhill of uh, Broadbeach, Australia, and was leading in that match. And then there were the uh, Emily Jim. We'll find out about her result soon. So still a few final results to come through. Yes, and remembering there's four divisions, so there's all yeah. these different semi-finals running through. Aidan Takadur on 20 points now, so one away from defeating Nick Cahill, who's on nine. And the other, oh, that's the, yeah, the other two semi finalists will be um, Anthony Ule and Jonty Hall in the first division. Second division, Braden Casswear is through to the semi final. Jacob Inch is through, Briar Atkinson is through, and Nathan Gooden is through. And the rest of the results you can find on the Burnside Bowling Club's website. And back on this game, 19-15. I reckon we're still going to see like a 19-all situation. Well, if, uh, good for television. if Tyra gets close with this, then he'll take the advantage and all of a sudden look at match point. Is he around it? He is. He's lovely. This is another good bowl. Beautiful might be shot. the shot, might not be the shot. Still good opportunity here for Kelleher. On the back end. Looks like uh, the other semi-finalist yeah. is going to be Aiden Takadua. John, just quickly, can see on the, on the left, you can see they're walking off on your screen there. And Aiden's picking up the mat, so I'd be surprised if Nick scored... 13 points in about 20 seconds, so I would indicate, I would suggest that means that Aiden is through in the top division, so we're just waiting on the winner of this match uh, to find out the four semi-finalists of Division 1 for this year's Burnside Under-26 singles, and of course we will have a new winner, won't we, because the defending champion yep. Taylor Horn has been, I think, aged out of contention here. Yep. He won it two of the last three years. Yeah, good way to finish, I would say. Yeah. I think Richard Hocking held a blue paddle up. I can't see how. Doesn't look like it should Not be, even does it? Now, will he? Yeah. So but I couldn't see for sure. No, that's certainly that bowl to the left of the Jack Jack level. Has Just to be holding Jack high as the shot. Oh, he's corrected it. Oh, good. Okay. You can see there, ah, oh, just missed him. As we see the bowl coming to the head from the player's side, Richard was holding up one. Oh, two now, it'll be. It'll be two. And Tyro gives it, a, Richard. a bit of applause on the side of his thigh, saying it was a really good bowl under pressure. I'll just watch the marker. He'll indicate with his lollipops as well, but the camera is staying on him for the sole reason. So I hope he gets around to it any time. Yep, there he goes. Two. Two. Two to the red. Four. Now, we haven't seen Tyro play with any weight, have we? No, been? at no point what's in this he, game has no, he done that. What's he got to play with here? He's been drawing so well on that backhand, the, the right-hand side as we view it. I think he'll back himself. He's I got think... the back bowl, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, I mean, if this movement... On the other hand, oh gosh, I don't know. I think stick with the hand you've been playing it so well. But of course, when he looks out there, there is still one more bowl to play from his opponent. So staying with that hand, all right. It's he's made his mind up. It's be a bit of consideration given here, but the other hand just appeared to be too dangerous with a shorter bowl of his opponents there. So let's see, dead draw for the Take shot. It. Tight a line. Needs weight to hold it up. He's still steering down this bowl. Oh, he's got it. He's going to get the jack. He's going to get the jack and take it back to himself. What a wonderful shot. Beautiful bowl there. He's holding the game. Absolutely beautiful bowl. 
don't know what else to say about that, John. <laughs> it's oh, fantastic. Well, we'll be seeing some highlights at the end of this, Alex, and that will be one of them for sure. We've seen some remarkable bowls in this match between Hamish Kelleher and uh, Tom Tyroa quarterfinal in the Burnside Under-23 tournament, Under-26 tournament, and uh, well, that was a perfect one. He just played perfect weight. So this he is to save the now, game. He knows that it's no use, no use getting excited yet, is it? Because he knows that this guy's got one left, and he's been playing so well. Callaghan now, last bowl of this end. Is it the last bowl of the match? He's narrow, but anything could happen because he's got weight. He's got weight, and oh, cuts one out. He does he's not, not cut one it. out. And that's it. It is two shots on this. What did we play? How many ends did we end up playing? 23 ends, and the man who will go through to the quarterfinals in this Division 1, to, to the semifinals in this Division 1 section is Tom Tyro of West End and Timaru. He's played in a magnificent game against Hamish Kelleher of uh, West Coast slash Canterbury, and two quality players playing an absolutely high quality match. 21 to 15. It looks like a big margin, but that was so close throughout. Alex, wasn't that a great game? It was. It was a great game, uh, John, and thank you for joining me in the commentary booth for it. I think we picked, I mean, I don't think bowls gets any better than that. We had, we didn't get no. quite get sun, but we had wind and rain and good bowls, and that's just all there. You know, I couldn't wax lyrical more about it. Um, you mentioned highlights. We're not going to have highlights at the end of this game, so we'll just have to, if you want to watch the highlights, I mean, I'd rewatch that game over and over again, John, <laughs> as, I, as many times. I watched just... that, last, that last bowl of Tom Tyros over and over again, that's oh, for sure. Absolutely great yeah. stuff. So brilliant. So, a brilliant day. Uh, this is uh, day three of this uh, Burnside Under-26 singles. We're through to the semi-finals, and as we've mentioned earlier, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, you can join us live for one of those two semi-finals with regular updates on the second semi-final. And then, when time allows, we will have live for you the final from the 20th version of the Burnside Under-26 singles in association with Living House. More for you tomorrow.